Well, we're now ready to actually understand two-layer attention-only transformers. And I think there's actually some really cool stuff inside them. So I'm excited to chat about this. Uh, in particular, there's going to be some really interesting stuff that they're doing uh, that kind of is meta-learning relevant um, and seems to generalize to much larger models. And so um, hopefully we'll learn some, some interesting and generalizable lessons. Now, uh, if you watched our, our previous video, on eigenvalue analysis. You'll remember that um, eigenvalues are kind of a nice way to summarize the behavior of attention heads without having to look at them uh, very closely. And in particular, positive eigenvalues for an OV circuit, for the output value circuit, mean that an attention head wants to increase the probability of um, that the output is the same. It'll increase the probability uh, or increase the logits for the, that the output is the same as the token that it's attending to. So uh, really, it just means the attention head is, is implementing copying. And if you, you know, last time we saw that really the behavior of our two-layer transformers is mostly described by understanding the uh, second-layer attention heads. And there's 12 of those. And of those 12, seven are doing copying. So it's a little bit less than when we were looking at the one-layer model, but still uh, the majority of our attention heads are doing doing copying, and we're going to see that they're doing a much more interesting type of copying and a much more powerful type of copying than uh, the one-layer model was. Uh, yeah, so we could try to go and study this by analyzing the QK circuits. Um, the math would get a little bit complicated. So an alternative is that we can try to just empirically uh, understand the attention patterns, and then uh, we can go from there if we want and try to understand more about the math of the QK circuits. And something that we see a lot of is what we call the induction pattern. Um, so for instance, if we look here, uh, and it might be a little bit hard to read. So let's, let's focus on this D token. So that's the present token. And if we look back, it attends really strongly to ERS, which is the next token after D. Um, and if then we go and when we look at the, when the present token is ERS, it attends to Li. And this is a, a very general thing. So, you know, similarly, um, when, uh, when the present token is pot, um, so this is all from the first paragraph of Harry Potter, by the way. Um, I think probably, maybe we mentioned that in a previous video, or maybe we haven't, but I, I've been having some fun using that as a standard um, piece of text to go and play around with. Um, but you can also observe this on lots of other lots of other text, and it, it works very reliably. Um, but yeah, so if we if the present token is pot, um, well we have the potters, so we we attend to the next token, the token that follows pot previously, ters. Okay, and so we're starting to get a pretty good hypothesis maybe of what's going on here, which is that somehow this attention head always attends to the token that follows previous copies of the present token. So if we if we're on pot, the previous copy was pot and then we get TERS. Okay, so how could it be? Well, that's kind of interesting. Now, a natural hypothesis is that the reason it does that is that it would allow it to go and predict then what the next token is, because the, the goal of the present token here is to predict the next token. And we can actually just measure that. We can just take the output of the attention head, and it just has a linear path down to the, to the logits. Um, and so we can just run that into the logit, um, and even without analyzing the terms, we can just see the, the empirical effect um, on the logits. And it's indeed going and predicting errors, going and predicting Li, uh, going and predicting a little bit um, the pot on, on Potter. So we have the pot, the pot, um, but then the, the ters and Potters really strongly. And so it's increasing the probability of all of those. And in each of those cases, it was attending to that token. So it's copying, it's copying the errors to the errors. And then we have this hypothesis that maybe somehow the way it's doing that is because the previous copy of D um, or the present token is D and the, that was the token that preceded where we attended. So we'll call that the induction pattern. And we can actually verify our hypothesis that um, that was that it's actually looking for the fact it's sort of um, that, that the fact that the previous token is the same is, is what it's looking for. Um, and if we, if we just look at how the key for this, uh, so let's, let's 
let's pick a particular case. So where, where we're on pot and it attends to terms. Well, it turns out that if you look at how the key is computed, the key isn't computed from the present token, but it's actually computed from the previous token. So we shift the, we grab the content of the preceding token and inject that into some subspace and then use it to construct our key. Whereas we construct our query mostly from the present token. And so by going and looking for then, looking, looking to go and match the present token with the subspace that we stored this in, we're able to go and look for tokens that follow a token that matches the present token. So that's a little bit more of a complex algorithm than anything we've seen. It's almost a little bit like nearest neighbors um, in that you're, you're, you're sort of, you're searching for, for you're, you're almost treating, treating your, your text up to this point as, as being a little bit like a training set and you're looking for places where, um, where there's a match and then you're going and copying that or something. Now, it, it does other interesting things too. So, um, you know, sometimes it's just the present token that matters. But there's also cases where, like here we have, have this D. And if you look at this, um, I don't have it here, but if you, uh, if you interactively play around with this, you'll see that it really is that the D of this query matches the D of this key. And the Mr. of this query matches the Mr. and to a lesser extent, the Mrs. portion of the, the key over there. And so um, they match. And then that causes us to attend to ERS, which then increases the probability of ERS. So it, it really is this this copying thing, and we're we're calling that that general mechanism of um, looking for looking for the token that in the past has preceded your present token, looking looking for situations where that were analogous to your present situation, and then predicting that whatever happened last, whatever whatever happened next in the past is what's going to happen next now. That's what we call um, induction and or an induction head, and that seems to really be the, the kind of the workhorse of meta learning in a lot of transformers that we see it um, in large models and it seems to seems to be playing a big role. Um, and it's not just one of them, uh, one head like this, we actually see a lot of heads that are doing slightly different flavors of this. Um, some are, are sort of very strict versions that are really looking for exact matches um, and uh, exact, uh, yeah, exact matches and copying. Um, whereas others are a little bit more flexible. Like here we have, um, Dursley, probably Mr. Dursley was, he, and then we copy was, um, or uh, you'd, and then didn't. Um, but probably if you're using apostrophes, that's then contractions, you're, you're likely to do that again in the, in the future. Uh, so yeah, we see a lot of this, this kind of induction. Now, uh, yeah, is there some way that we, we have this really handy trick for detecting heads that do copying um, by just looking at the, the OV eigenvalues. And we mentioned previously when we talked about their video on eigenvalue analysis that um, having positive QK eigenvalues would mean that we were attending to, uh, that we were trying to attend tokens that are similar. And so we can apply that same trick. Um, and uh, here are our QK circuits a little bit more complex. So it's rather than looking for a positive eigenvalue, meaning that um, that we're attending literally to the token that's the same as our present token. It means that we're attending to a token um, where wherever the key is being constructed from is the same as our present uh, token, uh, or really the same as wherever our query is being constructed from. Um, but that's still if, there, if the if the keys if the QK eigenvalues are positive, that's a very strong sign that we're doing something like induction. And um, the OV eigenvalues mean that we're doing copying. And so if we see if both are po positive, that's a, a sort of very strong signal that we're seeing induction. And we can see that there's six heads that are quite clearly doing this, and then another one uh, that is maybe doing this a little bit, but it's a little bit a bit messier. Now, that leaves a number of other heads that aren't going and doing copying and aren't, aren't induction heads. Um, I don't, one of the reasons I'm focusing on, on induction heads so much is because they seem to be genuinely really generalizable to larger models and to transformers generally and seem to be sort of a very important story about how transformers work. I don't know that I have any really interesting generalizable takeaway about these other heads, um, not based on the study that I've done on this model so far. A lot of them seem to be doing sort of like slightly n-gram-ish stuff. Um, and yeah, so I'm not going to focus as much on them. Uh, oh, one final thing that's worth mentioning is um, 
just like we were able to go and do a histogram in the video that we did on, on eigenvalues to go and sort of quickly quickly summarize the heads in a really dense way, um, we can put the, uh, the, the, the sum of the QK eigenvalues divided by the sum of their absolute values on one axis, and the same thing for the OV values on another axis. And then attention heads that have both um, very, very positive on both of those, so tend to, to really copy and tend to prefer to look at places where a token is the same, they'll be up in that corner, um, and other tokens won't be, and so that's a, an even denser way to go and, and really systematically uh, pin down the, or really, in a really automated way, pin down the, the induction heads. Uh, okay, so a couple takeaways. Um, these induction heads seem to be uh, really a, a major mechanism for meta-learning. Um, and they seem to be a lot more effective than simple copying heads. And uh, we can automatically detect them, which is, is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I mentioned this earlier, but the, the other attention heads, um, they tend to be doing kind of localish stuff, and it's not clear that we have a, a really generalizable story, so we're not going to pay too much attention to them. Well, in any case, I think it's pretty exciting that we can uh, un really mechanistically understand uh, some of how these, these two-layer models work, and with enough effort if we wanted to, we could probably, probably really understand them. Um, and a lot of the ideas that we built up here, um, the, the general sort of form of this equation of thinking about, um, thinking about attention-only models and this idea of, of virtual attention heads um, are actually, I think, kind of generalizable um, and will be useful as we start thinking about, about larger and more complex models.